I was happy when Keeps reached out to sponsor today's video because two thirds of men 35 and older start losing their hair and it's either a receding hairline, your hair starts thinning or you actually see hair loss. I know a lot of guys my age and much younger start losing their hair and either don't do anything about it or don't know there's something they can do. If you didn't know, two thirds of all guys start losing their hair by the age of 35. So you're not alone. I know most guys don't want to talk about this topic, but you have control of this. The easiest way to stop hair loss is to take action early when seeing hair loss or thinning or receding hairlines. You don't need to lose your hair if you don't want to, and that's why I have to tell you about Keeps. For five minutes now and just a dollar a day, you'll never have to worry about hair loss again. Keeps is 10 to $35 a month. It's that easy. Keeps gets you what you want quickly and easily and discreetly. I mean, so easily that you don't even have to leave your couch. Click the special link below or go to keeps.com slash SSR, answer a few questions, snap a few photos, and board certified licensed doctors will review your information and make a recommendation. Keeps offers the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there clinically proven to keep your hair. The doctor will either recommend one or the other or both. Some of them you've probably tried before. And the best part, besides keeping your hair, Keeps will give you the first months free. To receive the first month of treatment free, go to keeps.com slash SSR. That's keeps.com slash SSR. All right, the truck saga is at full, I don't know, it's come to a head. I mean, use whatever terminology you want here. My truck, you know, the half rusty, half white truck, stuck in Colorado right now. Ah, eh. So anyway, uh, the truck driver was out there, Rob Frank, he's the guy who um, brought it back to and from Dallas for me. So that was a huge hookup and a huge hookup for him for uh, doing this run. The idea was going to be continue on from Adventure Drives that's dropped off my cars um, and then go pick up my cars in Napa and then bring them back here. But the problem we ran into is that the truck wouldn't go over like 55 miles an hour and he shut it off, turned it back on, wasn't fixing it. So I had him bring it, he made it as far as Grand Junction, which is uh, the edge of Colorado. It's the western edge of Colorado. You continue out on, uh, on 70 there and it'll bring you straight over to, I mean, you can go to Vegas, you can go to uh, San Francisco, whatever. But the dealership reached out to me and they're like, yeah, you need, uh, you need injectors and you need this and you need that. The dealership actually came up with $12,500 in stuff that my truck needed. And I was like, come on, like the truck's not even worth like it's $15,000 uh, like on a good day. And now you want $12,000 in service. I'm like, what does it absolutely need? They say, they're like, oh, it needs like a glow plug, maybe a fuel filter, bullshit, bullshit. But the big ticket item was the injectors. And that's what they said. And I thought it was maybe initially the tune. I said, all right, how much for just the injectors? If that's the main thing, I just want to get it running. When I get it back here, we can do the labor and everything ourselves. But uh, just get me back on the road. It's a diesel truck. Just the injectors, they quoted me like $6,500. And I was like, come on, $6,500 for injectors? I'm like, and I know the injectors aren't cheap. They're like a couple hundred bucks each, and it needs eight of them, if it actually does need all eight of them. But uh, I took that as my personal mission to solve that problem. And uh, I went and I found the injectors online. Uh, there was a company that has to sell the old diesel truck parts and the injectors anywhere between whatever. It's, it's a couple thousand bucks. But uh, when I called them up to order them, they told me that the injectors are going to be, it's, it's a, my truck is a uh, 04 and there's two different engines that they used in 04. So, and then I said, well, does that affect the injectors? It's sort of like when you go to AutoZone and you're like, yeah, I need uh, uh, new wiper blades. All right, is it a Cooper or a convertible? What does it matter? I just need the wiper blades, they're the same. So um, that's one of those things that I said, I'll just get the injectors, I'll send them over to you, put them in, get my truck back on the road. And it was six hours of labor, so it'll cost me 800 bucks versus, plus the injectors versus 6,500 going through the dealership. So I'm like, all right, well, I don't know what injectors it has. The, uh, the dealership's closed right now, so I can't even get that. I got the VIN number, does that help? So I went online and I went to like a VIN audit site and tried to look up, uh, I tried to look up what my engine code was so I could figure out what injectors. Uh, ultimately, I ended up going to GM Parts Direct, but we'll get there in a second. So when I went to this VIN audit site, of course, everyone's like, oh, enter $8 and we'll give you a VIN report on your truck. So I did that. 
And I'm going, because in like the preview, it was like, hey, check this out. Here's, uh, here's engine codes and everything like that. And I did the VIN audit and it didn't give me anything. Uh, it gave me like stuff that I didn't need, history report, but it did point out something that all makes sense now. Ready for this? You sitting down? You sitting down? I hope you're sitting down. My truck is a rollback. Because um, it was in the transaction history, and I tried looking stuff up like this when uh, when I was getting it, and look, the, the auctions are the auctions. People dump stuff in the auctions. I was wondering why um, it, it showed so much, like I like rust and stuff like that from the age, and I figured that was because it was probably down on a, on a seashore or something like that, or in a beach or a coastal community. Turns out, uh, and then even the injectors, I had a hard time believing it needed injectors, especially all eight, because that's something you do every 250, 300,000 miles. The truck's only got 133. So for it to need all the injectors, I mean, I would start leaning toward, towards a tune or something. But when I looked at that vehicle history report, truck sold a couple of times. In November of 2012, the truck had 98,477 miles on it. In October 2nd of 2013, 182,144 miles on it. So 100,000 miles in one year, right? Not just about one year. Now you're like, so what's the big deal? When I bought the truck, it had 128,000 miles on it. That's a full 60,000 miles less than it was sold for back in 2013, which was four years before I got it, before it ended up at auction. And there's just you can't do anything. So that would mean my truck is probably closer to 250 or 300,000 miles, which the, the, the real thing that happens when people roll back trucks is people like me don't know, I can't play to a maintenance schedule anymore because I don't know what the mileage is. That's the biggest fuck you is that like, yeah, somebody else will deal with it. It'll be their problem. And that's me. Like, I mean, diesel trucks go forever. It's not the biggest deal. But I just need an accurate representation. The value of it would change. Um, the purchase price would have been different. I mean, there's a whole bunch that goes on because I was looking at trucks with more mileage. But okay, this one's better. It's got lower miles. And ultimately, it doesn't. It's got more miles. And, and now it needs a, a $12,000 service from a dealership. But at the very least, it's going to cost me four or $5,000 to do everything on the truck, which sucks, right? It's just like, it's a dirty thing to do. I hate you if you roll back cars or trucks or SUVs. I don't care. Don't roll shit back. If you're going to have a vehicle and you want to drive it, there's a cost associated with that. Don't dump your problems on the next guy. I'm looking at you because you right there, maybe not you, but you right there, you roll shit back and you're an asshole for it. So yeah, so that's now my problem. So now it would make sense that maybe it needs the injector service because it's got double the miles that maybe even more than double the miles that I thought it had on it. And uh, so anyway, I got the injectors. But the, uh, the VIN audit thing didn't tell me what the injectors were. I went to gmpartsdirect.com, entered the VIN number, pointed to a part number, gave it to the guys, and I was able to get the injectors for like, I think it was like 1800 bucks plus another $1,500 core charge, but I got to send my old injectors back. Of course, the dealer was like, yeah, I also need the return, the fuel return lines and this and this and this. And I talked to the guys like, we never sell that. We just sell injectors. So I'm going to tell the dealership, just stick the injectors on because like I can't imagine the fuel return lines or, or the injector return lines are bad and all that stuff in the lines, but it is what it is. We'll see what happens. I just want to get that truck up and running and get it over here. Once it's over here, we'll deal with the, uh, the actual ins and outs and nuts and bolts, all that nonsense and getting this thing as perfect as I can get it. Remember it's now, uh, it's, it's my official workhorse for moving my own truck, uh, for moving my own cars. And if I spend five grand on service right now, it's going to be good to go for another 100, 200,000 miles uh, before any major uh, malfunctions. Diesel, I, I, diesel is very different from gas. I don't know if you guys are, are aware of that. I hope some of you are. But the diesel uh, platform will go a hell of a lot longer, a hell of a lot farther, hold up a lot more, or hold up a lot better than a gasoline vehicle, especially with a pickup truck. Um, so I've got that. So now my truck is stuck in Colorado. Uh, I got the injectors going out. It's got to go, once the injectors get there, it's got to go all the way to California, drop off, oh no, not just drop off, but uh, drop off my friend's car, which he, he left in Vail, and then bring my two cars back. And I've got the 360 that I just bought, and more on that tomorrow, and then my, uh, 
my NSX, which is out there as well. I'm gonna bring them both back to New York and then we'll get the rest of the thing painted. Even like now I'm like losing interest. I'm thinking about Speed Force wanting a new truck. Uh, I'm probably gonna buy a brand new cab and chassis because like this is one of those things it's just like you know it gets you like I don't want to put all this money I mean this will now put me at like 16 or 18 thousand dollars that I've put into this truck and uh, I'm just gonna go spend the 35 thousand dollars get a brand new truck so I'll have a zero mile truck that nobody I, I know nobody could have touched uh, have it drop shipped have it also turned over to a car hauler painted white from uh from Hodges so it'll have that base coat on it and then I can throw my decals or I can throw whatever I want on it beyond that. But yeah, so that sucks. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, pretty big kick in the dick, but it's now starting to make sense. Uh, that little surgy idol. I thought it all had to do with that tuner, but they say it had nothing to do with the tune. Uh, and that tune actually has to stay on there because I think they modified the airbox or something like that. So a factory tune would no longer work on this truck. Drivability wise, everything else, I've got no issues with it. But uh, the air conditioning that we fixed, the truck driver that I had uh, driving my cars over said the air conditioning failed within like 30 minutes. So I'm having the dealership fix that again because I fixed both the, um, the separator, whatever that thing was. And then also I swapped the head unit, which fixed it, but I'll, there's gotta be a, a bad wire or something like that. But you get this when you go through auctions and when you buy trucks and, and anything else, that's got a bunch of miles on it or is used. So, I expected it. Uh, I, I don't enjoy it, but uh, the unexpected is something you get when you do buy a used vehicle and do something like this. Shout out to Dash Hub for, for hooking the truck up in the first place. This is not something that uh, Dash Hub could have been aware of. I also ran the VIN when we got it um, and did the, the vehicle history report as far as what comes up on Google and everything like that. Everything seemed okay at the time. This VIN tracker, I'm going to say it's... Uh, it's got, I, my, I'm leaning towards the fact that it's accurate. It would make sense in the fact that it needs the injector service right now. Otherwise I would lean towards maybe it was a typo or fat fingers mistake that maybe it had 108 and they put 188. Um, yeah. So there's that. So my truck is stuck in Grand Junction, Colorado at the moment. The injectors will land there tomorrow morning. We'll get that truck up and running again by like Wednesday and then we'll ship it over to California and get my cars back. And I got another car I just picked up as well. I'll share that with you. Uh, lots, of, lots of buying right now. I'm doing a lot of money spending, but I just got in that like Ferrari mode. Thank you for watching. Catch you tomorrow.